In this video I'm going to look at titanium oxide. In fact what I'm going to look at is an oxide that forms on a titanium foil. So what we see in the data that I'm presenting in this tile is a pair of peaks that are well defined that represent an oxide of titanium, most probably TiO2. There are other peaks within the data that suggest that we are witnessing other forms of titanium, a very low binding NG peak could be associated with the metallic phase of titanium and since this is an oxide film on titanium it's not surprising that we might see some metallic signal. However the way we're going to examine the surface is by looking at how a low energy iron beam and these are helium ions so this is a type of intensity of signal that we would associate with ISS type measurements so the idea is not to damage the surface and yet that's exactly what happens so after 10 seconds of sputtering we see a, a change in the peak and as we carry on through this sputter sequence and I'm referring to it as a sputter sequence but in principle we are expecting no sputtering to occur but yet something is happening in the sample and you can see these dramatic changes in the peak shape. So the question is what happens to these other peaks? And well these other peaks are carbon and oxygen and we don't see a great deal of change in either of these peaks. The carbon does actually diminish and perhaps change in shape. There's a, a structure forming here but it's within the titanium that we really see quite a strong influence of the iron beam on the photoemission from titanium. An analysis of data of this form but would typically be performed in XBS by constructing a peak model mostly from bell-shaped curves and then fitting the curves to data and the arrangement of the curves ought to give us some indication of the different chemical state. Now to make valid assertions about the chemical state of a structure like this based on a peak model is quite difficult. We, we could fit these quite easily with a range of different peak models and therefore claim that we had metal, suboxides, all the way through to the titanium 4 plus and well while we could fit the data it may not necessarily give us a true representation of what's within these data in terms of chemistry. So rather than going about the analysis based on peak models at least initially what I will do is look at the data on mass and observe how these changes evolve with sputter time. And in doing so, I ought to be able to try and simplify the spectroscopic shapes that I might then want to perform peak fitting to. So constructing a peak model if I've isolated TiO2 peaks, for example, would be very straightforward. It would also be straightforward if I could identify the metallic form of the titanium. Now I actually don't have enough information in this data set to identify the metallic form but there are ways of obtaining such shapes from other samples and other measurements. So what we would like to do is build up an understanding of how we would go about constructing a peak model. There is another aspect of understanding samples by XPS and that is correlating information from the titanium with the oxygen and the carbon. And one way we can do this is if we look at the spectra from these three different elements and attempt to understand how they relate to one another. So quantification would tell us the ratio of oxygen to titanium to carbon. And this in itself is useful information particularly in this case because we have oxygen and the titanium very close in binding energy so variables such as escape depth and the transmission function these are relatively low risk when we try to do the quantification in the sense that the kinetic energy of both of these peaks are similar therefore the influence of the transmission and the escape depth will be similar so we ought to be aware that this is rather a special case. If, if we're looking at salt, where we're looking at sodium and chlorine, then the separation of the 1s for the sodium and the 2p for the chlorine, for example, would be widely separated in kinetic energy, 
we would then have to be very concerned about escape depth and also the transmission of an instrument. But in this case, we ought to be able to get a decent quantification based on the oxygen and the titanium. Since quantification will be important for the analysis of these data, I'm going to illustrate how I could perform quantification of these three peaks. But I'm not going to do it in the normal way. That is, I could define regions for the carbon, oxygen and titanium, and then use the quantification features of CASXPS to put together a report based on the signal from carbon, oxygen and titanium that's in the same row representing the same measurement for the sample. So that's what you would normally do. However, in this instance, I'm very much interested in working out how the data changes as a function of the sputter time. And I want to see how these changes occur with the carbon, the oxygen and the titanium all at the same time. So one way of linking these data together so they are not in separate VAMAS blocks, is to use an option on the toolbar. And the option will merge irregular. And what this means is that I will end up, if I display three spectra from the same experiment in the active tile and press this button, I will end up with a new VAMAS file that contains a VAMAS block that has incorporated all three of these elements. And here it is. So then the next question is, because having combined the information, this is equivalent to a survey measurement in the sense that I no longer have a single element transition associated with these data. So in order to quantify these, I need to bring up the quantification parameters dialog window and then manually create regions for the oxygen, etc. Now on the element library, and I'm going to use Schofield cross-sections to quantify these data. I can identify the peaks and I can identify the relative sensitivity factors. So I could create the quantification regions based on the, the element library in order to identify the different signal associated with these different elements. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use an option that allows me to zoom when the line selected and it will create when the line selected and it will create whatever I am pointing at on the quantification parameters dialog window in the sense of regions or components. I'm only interested in regions. So I'm going to leave it on the regions property page. So while this is topmost, I can then identify each one of my peaks in turn, use the element table and with these two tick boxes active, when I select the TiO2, what happens is we zoom in, a region is created, and all I have to do is adjust the start and end of the integration region. So zooming out, I can do the same with the oxygen. And zooming out, I can do the same with the carbon. So we're not really worrying about separating the chemical states here, but we now have a set of regions which, just in terms of placing a quantification table based on regions on these data, I could look at, I don't need the area, the full width half maximum, I'm not even interested in the positions because we're not interested in chemical state based on the position of these peaks. What we're interested in is perhaps the ratio and also the atomic concentration. So having made my decision about which elements of the quantification regions I want to place in a table, I press the apply button and there we have the quantification based on titanium, oxygen and carbon. So that demonstrates two things. It's demonstrated how to combine information from different narrow scan spectra into a single VAMAS block and how to create a quantification based on regions for these data. And what I will do in the next video is I will take sets of these spectra, combine them in the form that I've got here, and then perform an analysis that helps me to identify the shapes that will then support to constructing peak models, perhaps, or maybe in their own right, suggest some sort of anomalies or 
consistency within the data that will help us to understand the sample.